I would like to address whooping cough, pertussis, because that was also brought up last week. And I happen to have studied this extensively, the history of the different vaccines, and I'd like to tell you about what's happening today. Uh, whooping cough is endemic. Um, I am called from, from people all over the world who tell me that their babies have whooping cough, that they've been to the doctor several times, the doctors couldn't recognize it, denied it, refused to test for it, and then finally when the parents knew it was whooping cough and they insisted on being tested, that those babies turned out to be positive. In the meantime, they were treated with drugs that not only will not be helpful, but that can be harmful. What's happening today, again, in the old days, before the, um, we had a different vaccine. Um, let me start to pre-vaccine. Pre-vaccine, adults developed very strong immunity at the lung interface. And I can get to that in a minute, but there's a peer-reviewed article by Warfell from 2014 that was done on baboons who show the similar um, type of cough and immunity to humans, which showed basically that if you don't have that strong immunity at the lung interface, that even if you're vaccinated, you're likely to be the person that's spreading disease asymptomatically. But pre-vaccine, these adults experienced the disease and they developed very strong immunity and limited the spread. Then the first vaccine came along, it was a whole cell vaccine, meaning it was the entire bacteria that was killed and put into the vaccine and injected. Um, it had um, thimerosal in it and aluminum in it. It was very reactogenic. There were major problems that were happening with that. Vaccine companies went out of business. Connaught went out of business with, uh, with that vaccine. And it was um, basically replaced by the vaccine that we have today, which is acellular vaccine, which means that there are just some parts of, of the bacteria in the vaccine. So the, the good news about that is that it's less reactogenic, meaning that there are far fewer pr problems with it, but there are still significant problems if you look at VAERS. Um, but that it creates something called original antigenic sin. And I didn't create this term. This is an immunologic term. Uh, that indicates that your first experience with, with an infection or with the vaccine will predict your response to later exposures. And that can actually be a detrimental thing or a helpful thing. If your first exposure is, a, is an acellular vaccine, this has been proven by Cherry, who is, a, who is one of the um, foremost writers on this issue for the past two or three decades, peer-reviewed medical journals, showing that people that are vaccinated don't respond to a toxin that the bacteria creates called adenylate cyclase toxin. It basically creates a force field that fools the body. So what happens is these people get their vaccines, which might prevent you from coughing for a short period of time. But ask yourself, why do babies need so many vaccines? Why do we have to keep getting them over and over? Why does a pregnant woman require a vaccine every time she's pregnant, even if she's pregnant every year? It's because of this phenomenon that the vaccines, while they might prevent you from coughing for a short period of time, will not actually prevent you from spreading the disease. And moreover, that if you're if you're exposed to the bacteria later, you are the person that's more at risk for having a very serious case of whooping cough if that vaccine is not protecting you the way it is designed to. Uh, the evidence for that is uh, with Warfell that I talked about earlier, and also Dr. Cherry has written about this, that the people that are vaccinated, their immunity begins in the blood and not on, in the lung surface. The bacteria comes in through the lungs. And so you want that battle to take place at the lung surface, and that's what happens with natural immunity. So let me just tell you the difference between these two baboon types. They, they, they looked at baboons that had never been vaccinated, and, and they gave them uh, the disease, whooping cough. Then they took some that were vaccinated with the vaccine that we use today. And they compared them after re-exposure. And what they found is that the, the baboons who had been vaccinated with the, with, the, um, with the vaccine that we use today had very high colony counts of bacteria in their lungs, even though they weren't coughing when they were re-exposed. The baboons who actually re were recovered after whooping cough and then re-exposed had no bacteria in their lungs. So that's one of the problems with today's vaccine. But the other problem is, and this is written about in the CDC's website, it's very widely published, nobody wants to talk about it, but mutant strains have come, have been born out of vaccinated populations. Just like bacteria mutate and become superbugs, the same thing has happened in a big way with pertussis vaccines. It's a major problem. It's written about worldwide. There's protactin, protactin which is an antigen on the bacteria, 
is not on some of the bacteria that are now these mutant strains. They're producing more toxin. It's much more vicious. We're seeing definitely worse cases of whooping cough, and these strains its documented medical literature have come out of vaccinated populations, not unvaccinated populations. They don't find them there.